We proudly present Film Fun, starring the cinema manager, with special guest star, the commissioner, Reg the projectionist, and Doreen the usherette. Oh, and Derek Griffiths. It reminds me of a trip I once made to the Siberian steppes with my good old regiment, the Third Chapati. Siberia? How interesting. Oh, he's not telling his Russian step story, is he? Dear, oh dear, pain, pain. I'll tell you, I'm not stopping for it. Moscow. Moscow! <laughs> well, step on it then, you horrible little man! No, where was I? In the Russian steppes, I think. Oh, yes, now we discovered frozen in the permafrost a perfectly preserved Siberian mammoth. So, uh, in the name of scientific investigation, we decided to cut a piece off and cook it. How brave of you. Fancy. Mammoth steak. <laughs> was it good? Oh, yes, sir. It was extremely tasty and most nutritious. There was, however, one slight problem. Oh, really? What was that, Commissioner? It took a hundred thousand years to defrost. <laughs> as well as guiding the development of many of Warner's leading cartoon stars like Bugs Bunny, Pepe Le Pew and Daffy Duck, Chuck Jones was also able to find time to produce those distinctive one-off shorts that were such an important part of Warner's output. Consider, for example, One Froggy Evening, released on the last day of 1955. Oh, he was nice, that little frog, wasn't he? I like frogs, don't you? I can remember once I found a little green cuddly frog at the bottom of our garden, so I thought it would be nice to bring him into the house. My mum, she said, oh, our Doreen, what about the smell? Oh, mum, I said, I don't think he'll mind. Leave it out, Doreen. Of all the characters that Chuck Jones was involved with during his years at Warner's, the best loved must be the indestructible roadrunner and his arch enemy, that scrawny creature of the desert, Wiley Coyote. Well, Jones felt very close to these characters, especially Wiley Coyote, who perhaps he saw as an extension of his own personality. Supremely confident, inventive, and showing dogged determination in the face of immense difficulties. The first cartoon in the series was Fast and Furious, released in 1948. From that moment on, Roadrunner and the irrepressible Wiley e. Coyote were to enjoy worldwide success on a scale undreamed of by either Chuck Jones or the Warner Studios. You know, I can't work that coyote out. He's always chasing that scrawny bird. He never catches it and probably wouldn't know what to do with it if he did. And what does he get for his troubles? Nothing but aggravation. Beats me. Well, of course, Reginald, you have put your finger upon the very nub of the problem. That is, what motivates Wiley e. Coyote? Coyote is a fanatic. What is a fanatic, you might ask? Nah, not really. According to the philosopher Santayama, a fanatic is someone who redoubles his effort when he's forgotten his aim. Coyote lives to chase the roadrunner, although that chase threatens his very existence. Self-destruction existing to destroy. Roll the credits, Reg. I think he's gone on to autopilot. So there you have the dichotomy. On one hand, the motivation. On the other hand, the self-destructive element. And on the other hand... It's all right with you lot. I've got to stay here and listen to all this. Ta-da. See you next week. Consider, if you will, the position of the spectator within this scenario. It is he, or rather us, who, empathizing with the Roadrunner, are able to objectively evaluate the threat posed by Wiley Coyote. Where do our sympathies lie? With the Roadrunner? Hardly. With the Coyote? Perhaps. Or is it with ourselves? Oh, no.